To the left of the steering column, we saw the, the button to release the fuel door, but there's the ability to open up the power lift gate. There's a blank there, another blank, and then we have the, the ability to quickly turn on and off the automatic high beams, because they sometimes have issues. Uh, and then this is a heater, actually, that heats up underneath the windshield wipers to release them if they're frozen. This is the heated steering wheel, so it has an on and off. All these have on and off lights, which is nice. There's also a dimmer switch for the interior gauges here, and then reset the trip. You can also switch between the odometer and the trip here as well. There's a tilt telescoping steering column, and <laughs> there's only a few positions that we can put leave this at, so I'll explain that in a second. That's how you lock it in place. I'm sitting in the driver's seat. I'm six feet tall, and I have the driver's seat all the way back and all the way down to give you an idea of the potential legroom. Now this is a little bit further back than what I would normally drive, so if you're a little bit over six feet, shouldn't have any problems as far as leg room. Uh, this area right here is a hard plastic and it kind of jets out a little bit right in here, so kind of sometimes if I, rest, if I rest my knee on it, it's not very comfortable. Um, and I do have to put the seat all the way down because of the headroom situation. It's a little bit not ideal, but so I could lift the seat a little bit higher, but for me I have to put it down, which is it feels like I'm sitting on the floor basically. Back over here is fine as far as legroom. Uh, and the angle of the footrests is good. Now the steering wheel, uh, the feel of it and thickness is really nice. It has a soft feel to it. It gives in the hand. It's not digging into your bones or whatever while you're driving. It's just really nice. One of the best feeling steering wheels. Feels really nice. Now, uh, the buttons on the steering wheel are quite a bit different from the normal Toyotas from the past. The cruise control, instead of being on a stock down here, it's up here, so you turn it on, uh, and then this is how you turn it on and set it at the same time, this button at the top. And then you can change the speed here, resume. You can turn on the lane keep assist system as well. And you can change through the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you using this button and it cycles through. Now if you want, like cycles through the distance and you kind of rest on the one that you want. So if you just want regular cruise control, see it has these separate buttons here. Uh, so adaptive cruise control or cruise control. So you can press that button and it shows you up here uh, what you're activating. So if you just want regular cruise control without the adaptive part, uh, you can do that as well, which is good. Uh, so you notice that's the cruise control. Below it down here, this section, is a little bit different that's with the radio so the volume for the radio is up and down here voice recognition change to the tracks and then the audio source your mode is your audio change to the audio source and once again you, you rest on the one that you want uh, but the the volume here uh, we'll get to that in a minute but there's no ability to press in or pause or mute uh, it's just a volume and it kind of works a little slow and the volume knob isn't all that easy to reach, so that's something to consider. Now, we'll go into that a little bit more. Uh, this arrows right here, and this back button, corresponds with the screen up here. And then you have a, a button to answer or hang up. So, to, once you pair your phone with the Bluetooth system, you can answer here or hang up using the same button. I wish they would have separated the buttons, but that's just the way it is. A lot of vehicles are like that, though. Uh, there's the windshield wiper controls here. And there is an automatic function, so it does have the rain sensing windshield wipers. And then here is the turn signal, but it also has the headlight switch. And you can actually turn off the headlights. Automatic parking and headlights on. Okay, so you see a problem right now. You see that steering wheel, and then you see what it's covering up. Uh, this vehicle, I'm going to release the, let me just give you, show you what it looks like to me. So when the steering wheel is all the way down, this is what it looks like. And when it's all the way up, this is what it looks like. Um, also, there's buttons that, you see these stocks, the turn signal and the windshield wiper stocks are always co covering out these buttons. So you have the buttons here on the left side, here that are covered up. It's really hard for me to show them here because uh, there's so many layers of obstacles. Um, and then here on the right side, this is an important button, that, that 
this button here for turning on the camera system. I use that all the time and I, I have to like, you know, go like this in order to find it and then press the button, you know, it's not easily found. And then this is the park in, park out uh, feature. Now, so adjusting the steering wheel, once again, we have these, the, the way the position is, for me, I have to pull it out and then push it all the way down and lock it in place there. And still, uh, it's still an issue as far as seeing this, because this is kind of far away and it's right, it's like almost perfectly lined up with the top of the steering wheel. I'm not sure, I, I think this is gonna be an issue for like almost everybody, because uh, there's, like if I was any shorter, like it would be a huge problem, you know? So I don't know, you'd have to be like, not be able to see the road to see it under the steering wheel. So that's not really an issue, so uh, a, a, a solution. So, because it this goes all the way up. Uh, but anyways, we'll get past that. Uh, there is the screen. And the OK button and arrows here, you can cycle through and get different information here. Uh, the top one here is the Eco. You can go left to right to get more information. Scrolling down, uh, this would be Digital Compass, Adaptive Cruise Control, down here, whatever your radio is playing here. Down again will be uh, engine monitor, and then the tire pressure sensor system. Now the engine monitor is not showing anything right now, but as you drive, you'll be able to see uh, little lines where the where where the power is coming from. Whether it's coming from the battery to the in, uh, to the wheels, or the engine to the battery, or the engine to the wheels, and all that stuff. And it constantly changes while you're driving. It's kind of neat to watch it. You also have the trip here. So tire pressure, energy monitor, and trip. Going down again will be, this is where you can go in and change settings. Um, you press hold to change the different settings, but you can see the status of different uh, safety features here. You can also go into meter settings, and you can change the language units and change the meter type. And then the hybrid system, you can turn that feature on or off. Now meter is basically this this display is what, what it's going for. It's what it means. All right, and then you scroll down here, any stored messages will show up there. Um, so you can see that this, this additional information is here. Um, and you can scroll through and leave whatever you want on. Um, but it also has a digital speedometer, it has a digital clock, distance to empty, fuel gauge, uh, all the necessary information there and also gives you information while you're driving as well. You can also hit the back button and make that whole thing go away and just have this part. So if you don't want anything there, you can just have this simplified version here if you want. Okay, so the touch screen over here, you notice the position of the, the volume knob is way over here. So as I'm sitting right here in the driver's seat and I reach out, you know, I have to significantly reach way over here. It's very convenient for the passenger, um, but I'm not sure. And it's, of course you can use this button, but like I said, uh, this volume knob does more than just turn the volume. It is more convenient to turn a knob, especially if you're in a hurry. You can quickly turn it up, you know, up and down or whatever. Uh, but also you press it in to mute the sound. So if you're pulling up to a, you know, whatever, and you want to mute the sound, um, you can you have to reach over there and press that button or you pre hold this down for like You know a long period of time and eventually get the volume low enough But then you have to hold it back up to bring it back up So, you know if this button were to have the mute function just like the knob over there Then it would be a little bit less of an issue, but uh, having the knob way over there seems a little weird, you know uh, So you can let me know what you think in the comments All right, so this has the type of system they used to say re the, the the this has been reimagined or whatever the uh the navigation has been reimagined now they change it to experience drive connect okay um which makes more sense because this drive connect is the app on your cell phone and you have to subscribe to certain features so if you want navigation you just can't get in this vehicle this vehicle doesn't have navigation um, your cell phone has features that can complement this system. Um, so it's going to appear, once you subscribe, that this vehicle has navigation. 
but until you subscribe and install apps and things like that, if you don't have a cell phone, this car does not have navigation. I'll just say it that way. <laughs> All right, so the next one here, so these, you see these icons? And you can kind of quickly go through. Um, so the navigation would be there. This would be whatever your audio is going on. So you have radio, have my cell phone here, you have Apple Music, Amazon Music. So let's go to the radio so you can see what it looks like. And you have different uh, tiles there. You can tune directly. You have AM, FM. Turn the volume down here. Um, so yeah, there's different sources here that you can choose. And then you have, uh, let's go to satellite radio. And then you can see I can kind of narrow it down because satellite radio has a lot of different channels, so you have to kind of narrow it down. Next one will be your your phone. Uh, so you can once you pair your phone, you'll have access to the recent calls, the phone book, and all that stuff. I have it disconnected right now, but um, but you'll be able to you know basically send and receive calls and send and receive texts that kind of thing. Uh, the next one is uh, information about your vehicle. You can go to front and rear climate controls you have different options here this is a little bit different from the the settings which is on the next one uh, you have trip information you have the history here 47 not too bad uh, energy flows you can keep an eye on that that's pretty neat it's similar to what we saw over here on that screen but this is a, a larger and, and more detailed uh, vehicle alerts, any information would show up here. The next one, the last one on the COG is the, this is where you can go in and set up your settings. Um, so Bluetooth devices, you have general settings, like so. You also have display settings, sound and multimedia, uh, voice and search, customize the, customize the vehicle. Uh, so yeah, you have to kind of go into the general setting that you want before you can find more specific settings and sometimes they're You know like vehicle customization lights door control all this stuff You want to go ahead and set this up when you first get the vehicle uh, Lights are here And speaking of lights uh, it has this kind of ambient light right here It's kind of neat looking accent more of an accent light really that's not really usable for any kind of like visual seeing anything uh, but it does have another purpose and that is like it, it alerts you so it'll flash sometimes so if you're sitting in traffic and then the person in front of you moves forward and you, you're just sitting there and you don't, didn't notice that they moved you're like not paying attention this will kind of pulse and flash a little bit to get your attention so it does serve other purposes than just a neat look looking light all right so there's the four-way flashers and then the clapping control is here it's a single zone so temperature fan speed, where you want the air to blow. Uh, you also have uh, the front and rear defrosters. Um, they can change where, whether you want to recirculate the air, turn on the air conditioning. The passenger side, cooled seat, three stage, heated seat, three stage, and then the driver, uh, same thing. He three stage heated and cooled seat, and it does have an automatic function. But it's not a dual zone or tri-zone or anything like that. It's just one temperature and one fan speed at a time. All right, so down here is the 12 volt power supply, two USB ports, one is for charging, one is for connectivity. And then it has this really handy little storage pocket right here. It's kind of rubberized there in the bottom. Uh, it's, there's no illumination down here. That's kind of a spoiler for the night video, but uh, it does have this little storage area. Now underneath it, it has like a secret compartment where you can put your valuables. So you can actually take this out and you have a secret compartment there, put a bunch of valuables in there. Looks like somebody forgot to clean up behind themselves. Left a mess. Have to deal with that later. And then you have cup holders here. Little articulating arms. And so here's the shifter. And it's just like the Prius shifters in the past, but it's in a different location. It looks kind of more neat looking. Uh, but basically, you move it over down to drive. Move it over and hold it to neutral. Move it over push it forward for reverse. Uh, and then if you want if you want the Downhill descent the engine braking. So there's only like one option and that is you pull it down and this is Like if you're in drive and then you pull it down and initiate the the engine braking So this is more handy 
for like if you're going down hills and you need some engine braking uh, it's basically using the regen system to slow the vehicle down now the, the regen system's already automatically on but this gives it an extra boost in order to keep your vehicle from just flying down a hill uh, so it's technically what they would call another gear like reverse neutral drive that kind of thing uh, so that's what that basically is for for going down a hill and slow keeping your vehicle from you know running too far too fast or whatever uh, but let's go ahead and put it back in reverse because uh, the, the parking sensors are activated but also you have this really nice camera system uh, so you have this top-down view here on the left side you also have the the view behind the vehicle you notice the center line is here it's not in the very center because once again the camera is not in the center so we have to add this line to show you where the actual center of the vehicle is uh, so it's trying to accommodate for that and the same thing with stitching all these four views there's a camera on the underside of each side mirror and there's one in the front that's offset and one in the back that's offset so it has to the software system has to accommodate for the position of the cameras to uh, stitch that view together that top-down view and it seems to work pretty good um, another cool feature about this is when you move it actually memorizes what it saw in the front and back and kind of like gives you like this transparent look to your vehicle really cool looking uh, it has active guidelines uh, and and also different views so the going forward you can have the view in front of the vehicle uh, but you'll notice that where the position of the camera is located you have it's kind of in this little tunnel area <laughs> uh, it looks like a tunnel because it you're getting up things in the way you know the position of the camera I always pay attention to that because uh, they always kind of put it in this this place where it looks like it's an aftermarket or an afterthought it's not really thought through in my opinion sometimes where they put these cameras the position of the camera is very important you know uh, like you like you know let, let's say I'm, I'm showing you this screen and I got the camera over here you know it's like well how about I, you know how position the, the position of the camera is more important for me to show you the screen this way and not like way over here right so the position of the camera makes a difference as far as your usability and also the vehicle like especially if you have a stitching system or if you have guidelines that kind of thing you know it just makes sense to have it in the center of the vehicle um, but anyways you do have the ability to you have different settings here this is more like a like kind of like a drones following your vehicle press it in to go back to the the front view you can also turn on or off these these like lines right here you can choose what you want to have this right here is my favorite you can turn the automatic function on so if as you're driving I leave it on because as you're driving and you slow down it automatically if you're going really slow and you're pulling into a parking spot it automatically turns this camera on whether you're going forward or whatever uh, really like to have that turn on it's really handy uh, sometimes especially if you want to nail the parking spot or if you just want to see what's right around the vehicle or you're, you know you're in a tight spot instead of trying to hunt and find that button uh, you just automatically have it turned on which is great so yeah I'm, I really do like the camera system uh, it's functional it's big enough you can see it the clarity's good uh, the position of cameras can be better but you know I'm, <laughs> I'm starting to get used to it because it seems like almost all manufacturers uh, tend to mess that up uh, even when they have a chance to do, do like a refresh or, or completely redesign and they still don't take into account that they're gonna have a camera there but anyways so yeah you just press this button to put it in park here the traction control off if you need to spin tires you turn that off I don't recommend turning it off unless you like literally need to spin tires because uh, it could make you lose control of the vehicle if you're not familiar with with uh, driving a vehicle without traction control uh, this vehicle tends to slip a lot, so the traction control is enabled a lot um, when I'm, you know, if I'm driving spiritedly. Uh, so if you, if I were to have to turn that off, then yeah, it would do some more spinning, I would suppose. Now it has, you can force the vehicle to go into EV mode. Now this is a, this is a front wheel drive vehicle, and it is not the Prime. So if this was the Prime, then you'd have more of a range. Uh, but this one. It doesn't really have much you can't like if you push the accelerator too hard it's just gonna just override this anyway so you can force it in the EV mode for whatever reason if you want to sneak up on somebody and you want the engine to turn on abruptly uh, you can do that but it's not really that useful electronic parking brakes here you lift it up to engage it 
and engages the rear wheels. To disengage it, hold the brake, press it down. Um, now, when you put it in park, it automatically engages it anyway. So, but for whatever reason, if you need to engage it, you can. And this is the brake hold feature, which every time you come to a complete stop, it'll hold the brakes for you until you hit the accelerator. All right, so here's the armrest, and this is like the hardest armrest of all time. <laughs> it feels like you have like one millimeter of padding and then an anvil underneath. Um, so yeah, it's not really super comfortable. Uh, it looks nice though. And then this lifts up here and it is spring loaded. So it doesn't flop back down on you. And it has this compartment here and I put my, there's my business cards in the way. But it does have a felt lining there at the bottom. This black so it's hard to see. And then you have two USB charge ports, which are backlit, but there's no interior lights here. Now there is a wireless uh, cell phone charger right here, which is pretty cool. Um, it has these little arms that kind of hold on to your cell phone. So as you put your cell phone in there, you can move it this way, but if you list it this way, it'll charge. Now, with my case, sometimes, the case that I have on my phone, sometimes it'll charge, sometimes it won't. Um, but yeah, right in here is the cell phone charger and you, there is a on and off button here. So if you wanna stop charging your cell phone, sometimes you don't always wanna charge your cell phone, right? Just, but you wanna use this pocket. Uh, you can put it in there, you just turn it off and you don't have to charge it. Uh, but you can also press the button and turn it on. So you see this little space right in here? There's a little tiny bit of space right here on the underside of this armrest. When you close it, uh, if you line up a wire to go into this compartment, um, right there, it'll go in and out of this compartment. Um, but that's that's pretty much it. Everywhere else is kind of closed off pretty good. It might pinch the wire. Um, but yeah, that's apparently that's what that's for, is to put the wire in, in this compartment. Okay, so the backup, the, this is a camera, and then there's the, the mirror. Remember I mentioned that? Uh, and then there's the camera here and it works really good uh, as long as your eyes can focus on it because you know as you get older it's hard to focus on things that are close so as you're driving you have that to focus on you have that to focus on and this to focus on D three different distances so unless you have like you know transition glasses or whatever uh, sometimes I've had issues where my eyes had a hard time adjusting on this because it was a little bit too close uh, but you know and this is an upgrade, so if this doesn't work for you, you don't have to buy it. This is an actual upgrade and like $200 or something on the window sticker. So if you don't want this back, this rear view camera, you don't have to have it. It does have adjustments here. You can adjust the zoom in, go up and down, adjust the brightness and all that uh, using those buttons. The buttons here on the left side is the home link garage door opener controls. All right, and then there's these soft touch buttons for the lights here, here, Turn on all the interior lights and then have them turn on with the door using that button. If you don't want the interior lights to turn on with the door, you can turn that off. That's the on light. And then they have roadside assistance here and it's covered up. All right, so this visor has like a vinyl material that matches the roof, which is like a beige type material uh, color. And it has this extension here. It also has a light with a mirror. But you notice right in here is like a place uh, that you can put your registration or driver's license right in here. It kind of slides in this little spot right here, which is cool. I like it. Uh, same thing on the passenger. It has it on both sides. Uh, so this does not slide out. You know, it has this extension instead. And the vinyl is nice because it stays real. You can clean it easier. So if you're touching it a lot and your hands are dirty or whatever and you get marks on it, it's easy to clean. Uh, the headliner is a cloth. So some some visors have like a cloth material, a little bit harder to clean. This is very easy to clean, that vinyl material. Okay, so it has glass roofs, two of them. So these are not sunroofs, they're not gonna slide, they're not gonna tilt, they're just fixed glass. And it has shade that covers 100% of the light. Uh, but they're quite wide, they look pretty cool. There in the back has a shade as well, so has a separate shade. But you notice it has like this bar right here. See, if it had was, it was, if it was like a another, the way it was designed a little bit better where it didn't have this huge, you know, thing here in the center, I think it'd be better. But anyway, that's the way it is. The visibility front and back is a little bit of a challenge sometimes. So you have these really wide pillars 
there in the back. You have the, these pillars here on the side. And then you have the, these pillars here on the front. And also the dash just kind of gets in the way. Like it's a humongous dash here in the front. Um, so yeah, and also this sticks up so it's kind of in your way a lot. Uh, so yeah, the visibility has some issues. But it has a great camera system, parking sensors, rear cross traffic alert, blind spot detection system. Uh, it has a lot of really good technology features to help you drive the vehicle but just looking sitting in the driver's seat looking around it's got some issues for sure okay so i'm trying to position this camera so you can see hopefully see the screen up here it's almost completely, or it's partially blocked by my view. Drive modes. Uh, it has sport, custom, normal, and eco. Uh, normal is on the weak side, I, I guess, because it's a Prius, so I guess they're trying to go for the fuel economy and stuff. Uh, sport mode, if you really want to accelerate, then sport mode is actually a big difference. Um, it actually does make a difference. It, it is pretty fast vehicle actually. It's kind of loud and to some degree obnoxious when you're driving it, but it does accelerate pretty quick. And also when, when it cycles to the EV part, you do have like this artificial noise that it broadcasts uh, around the vehicle. So other people, I guess, so know that there's a vehicle running or whatever, but um, you know it's pretty common but it does kind of get a little bit of annoying cycling back and forth where you hear the the noise then you don't hear the noise then you hear the engine you don't hear the engine and the engine is quite loud Yeah, it has that EVC, e, that CVT type experience, and it doesn't have any fake shifting or anything, which is good. Uh, it just has, you know, full-on steady acceleration, and then you just let off of it when you want to let off of it. There is road noise. There is wind noise. There's engine noise. Uh, there's EV noise. So. You know, if you want a quiet vehicle, this is not really going to be maybe your top choice, but this is a fairly comfortable ride. The seats are comfortable. Uh, as long as you're okay with the wonkiness over here as far as, you know, seeing the screen in front of you and different things. The steering wheel is comfortable. The adaptive cruise control works well. Um, it feels safe. feels reliable. The automatic high beams aren't all that great, but they work most of the time. course the vehicle looks good but the driving experience is is I don't know it, it, it I think it's gonna polarize some people you know some people might not care for some of the characteristics noise um, is a, I think is gonna be one thing that's gonna turn some people off some people don't care you know but uh like in my case, I probably as far as the noise level, I probably would just get used to it. You know, it's not it's not a huge deal to me. Uh, but other people are more sensitive to noise and stuff, so uh, they might be more inclined to pass on this vehicle. Now the lane keep assist system, it's actually called the lane tracing, and it does a pretty good job without fighting you. You know, so it stays and traces. It uses a lot of different technology. One is to look at the lines, but it also can look at vehicles in front of you as well and kind of like, you know, tie everything together. So it does a decent job of staying in a, a position in the road that's normal, not some weird, you know, swerving type thing that some vehicles have. And it, uh, it doesn't fight you. See, that's a big thing to me is, is it is fighting against you as you're driving. Uh, it doesn't really do that. So, it, 
lane tracing system works well. And the adaptive cruise control, pretty much all the different levels as far as the distance between me, me and the vehicle in front of me, uh, it seems pretty safe, you know. It, it adapts to the different speeds and it adapts the distance and all that stuff. So if I set it at a, I typically have it at like three bars, two, two or three bars typically. And it's a safe distance, it keeps, you know, there's no problems with that. Now the deal, deal breakers for me would be that claustrophobic feel that I get because of all this stuff in front of me and all the, the layers and things blocking views of other things. Um, the noise could potentially be a deal breaker. Uh, and me sitting on the floor, basically, like I don't feel like I'm sitting in a chair. I feel like I'm sitting on the floor with my feet in front of me. Uh, but other than that, I mean, th there's so many positives to say about this vehicle. Uh, it looks great i think that's the biggest thing for me it just looks really good and the you know if it was quieter the la the engine just kind of like reminds you that this is a this is not a it's a toyota you know toyota lexus they're gonna be loud that's just the way it is that's they've always been like that they apparently are not trying to change it so something to consider